Good morning. Thank you all for coming out on this cold, cold morning. My name is Ruth Ann Holmes, and I'm the outreach director here at MUMC. Thank you for joining us in worship today, whether you're online or in person. If you are new here, please fill out a connection card so we can get to know you. You can also find a link to the connection card on our webpage, umcmarshall.org. We are supporting Marshall Area Community Services again this year with the Max Giving Tree, located inside the north entrance. If you don't already know, let me know. Let me tell you how it works. Simply br- grab a tag off of the tree, shop for one of the families in need, and bring your unwrapped gifts back to the church by, I think it's Sunday, December 11th, to be delivered to families for Christmas. Thank you in advance for your generosity. We'll also be collecting hats, gloves, and mittens for children ages, for little children up to 12 years of age. These can be left in the basket near the angel tree located by the coffee house or in the collection bin outside the north doors. We are also collecting, we are a busy church, aren't we? We are just a busy church. I love it though. So our fresh fruit distribution is coming up, and we're going to be collecting hygiene items again this year. It was very successful last year. We're going to fill up, um, I wanted to say Santa stockings, because I looked back over there, and I thought I saw Santa Claus. (laughs) As the need for food continues to grow in our community, so do other needs. So we've started collecting personal care and toiletry items to be handed out to families during the fresh food distribution. So please drop off some bars of soap, deodorant, shampoo, toothpaste, feminine hygiene products, etc. out in the hallway or in the collection bin by the north doors by Sunday, December 4th, as we continue to help families in need in our community. Now, please stand if you are able for opening hymn. My name is Bonnie Chapel, and it's my privilege to be your liturgist on this cold Sunday morning before Thanksgiving. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. Your responses will be in bold. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. God blesses us with gifts of love, with food and clothing, home and family. 
God protects us in time of danger. And guards us from every evil. Therefore shall we offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. O Lord our God, we give thanks Thanks to to you you forever. You may be seated. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be open to know your truth and your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus.
Good morning. Good morning. I hope you all are doing well, staying warm. Uh, for those of you who couldn't be here this morning in worship, I completely understand. Uh, if you guys didn't know, it snowed a lot this weekend. Um, and it, for me, at least, it marks the beginning of the holiday season. And just out of curiosity, uh, how many of you started putting up Christmas de- decorations this week? Uh-huh. And how many of you started playing the Christmas music as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the time has come, and I don't know about you, but I can't believe that we're near the end of the year. It has flown by, 2022 has. If we have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Maddie Martinson, and I serve as the Discipleship Director here at Mumsy. And I know many of you were hoping to see Pastor Erin here in this spot this morning, uh, but she is still down for the count with COVID. Uh, she is currently on day 10, and she is very much looking forward to being back with us next week. If you know her well or have talked to her at all, you will know that she's been planning her jailbreak since day one. <laughs> yeah, she, she's anxious to get out, um, and she wishes she could be here, uh, but she cares about you all very deeply. Uh, so I, I, here I am, <laughs> ready to preach. Um, I've actually been on the schedule for a while. It just happens to be that the timing worked out okay. So this morning, uh, as we are kicking off this holiday season, we are talking about Thanksgiving, which, of course, we will be celebrating here in the United States this week. Thanksgiving and then the holidays that follow, Christmas and New Year's, are t- a time that is marked by gift-giving, Uh, Meal planning, decorating, spending times with friends and family, and eating a lot of food. Am I right? It's a time of great joy and love and fellowship. But for some of us, that isn't always the case. The holidays can bring about feelings of grief or loneliness, sadness or despair. And at some point of our lives, I will bet Actually, I know that all of us will have a holiday season that just isn't received with that same enthusiastic joy that some of us have. And that's okay. As we approach Thanksgiving this week, I want to acknowledge that that is an ongoing reality for some of us, and it's an ongoing reality that we will all face if we haven't already. This week, many of us will engage in some Thanksgiving traditions with our family and with our friends. Maybe your family sits down on the couch on Thursday morning and you watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with all the big balloons and the floats uh, and the marching bands and so much fun. Maybe you're one of those super uh, athletic families and you decide to run a 5K on Thanksgiving morning. I am thankful that is something my family does not do, that's for sure. (laughs) Or maybe, and I think this applies for most of us here, maybe you suffer through yet another Lions game on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, yeah. Although, the last couple of weeks, we've had some hope, right? So maybe we can make it three in a row. We'll see. Another tradition that many of us participate in on Thanksgiving is uh, going around the dinner table or the lunch table and naming what each and every one of you are thankful for. We're thankful for good food and for family, for good health, and for acts of kindness that a random stranger decided to to do for us one day when we were out and about. There's a lot that is named uh, when we engage in this practice on Thanksgiving. And this practice goes along with our scripture passage we heard this morning uh, from Bonnie, our liturgist, And it comes from 1 Thessalonians, and it's a reminder uh, to the church that was being written to at the time, but also to us, it's a reminder to be thankful, not just during the holidays with Thanksgiving, but during all circumstances, during all times in our life. But as I mentioned, there are times in our life where finding something to be thankful for may not be as easy. So much may be weighing us down uh, that we find it difficult to name those things. Or being asked to name those things leaves a bitter taste in our mouth. 
Another tradition that many of you may uphold around this time is watching the Charlie Brown holiday specials. The classic cartoon tales of the lovable Charlie Brown and his friends, the Peanuts Gang, uh, are great traditional uh, shows that many of us watch during this time. A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving uh, is the one that is relevant to us this week. Uh, And in my opinion, it is often overshadowed by the Halloween and the Christmas specials, say. Uh, Still, the Thanksgiving special is a classic, tried and true. If you're not familiar with the story, uh, the Peanuts gang decides to have their own Friendsgiving before they go out to their respective families uh, to eat their Thanksgiving meals. So Peppermint Patty... The, the tomboy, you know, very uh, forthcoming young girl that she is, calls up her friend Charlie Brown and says, Hey, Chuck, I want you to prepare Thanksgiving for me and my friends. Great? Sounds good. And Charlie Brown says, Okay, I'll do that. And he does. He and Snoopy and uh, Woodstock... They, they prepare a meal for Peppermint Patty and the rest of their friends. And when the gang comes uh, t- to gather and to eat, Peppermint Patty doesn't get what she expected. I want you to take a watch at this clip. about you, but when I was a kid and I was the age of the Peanuts gang, I would have thought a meal of popcorn and jelly beans was pretty darn good. As we just saw in that clip, Peppermint Patty is not satisfied with the non-traditional Thanksgiving meal. Uh, And in her uh, cloudiness and her inability to see past that, she forgets to practice thanks to her friend who prepared it. I think this is a great message for the younger audience who uh, watches the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special. And that message is to be thankful, even if it doesn't go your way. Later in the episode, Peppermint Patty will eventually apologize and realize that she has so much to be thankful for. Her friends, her family, the food. It's still food. She's still being well-fed. And she has a best friend who was willing to go out of his way to prepare it for them. It's a concrete way to deliver that message of thankfulness for kids. Uh, the, the, the image of the popcorn and jelly beans contrasted with what is traditionally a Thanksgiving meal uh, really hits home for younger kids. But as we grow older, thankfulness is not always that concrete, is it? As life get, gets more complex so does the practice of gratitude. An image comes to mind for me that I think will be helpful in illustrating this. Thankfulness, as we grow older, is like a child receiving a gift, whether that's on Christmas or Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, you don't get gifts on Thanksgiving usually, Um, on Christmas or their birthday or whatever it may be, and they get that gift and they don't really like it. Their Aunt Carol made them a pair of wool beige socks, 
and they want nothing to do with those socks. They unwrap the gift with great enthusiasm, they see the gift, and then they get really pouty, right? They're like, ugh, what's this? They might even go as far as to like throw it across the room to get it as far away from them. But then, usually, a parent or a guardian will step in and tell their child, hey, I know you really don't like it, but you should still say thanks to Aunt Carol, right? And very reluctantly, the child will go up to Aunt Carol and say, thanks, Aunt Carol. (laughs) Yeah, right? We've all been there. We've all seen our kids and our grandkids or... Maybe we have a time where we remember being that kid, right? As adults, we have these kinds of moments too. Maybe not for a gift, because by now we all know how to be polite and how to give thanks for something that is not always well received. But in life in general, we will not always be dealt the best hands. In life, there are scenarios such as receiving a health diagnosis, or uh, losing a loved one that we are now grieving, or facing mental health challenges, or feeling alone and lonely during the wintertime, or feeling like you just can't provide for your family in the way that you would like to. These scenarios and more are situations that we will all encounter in our lifetimes, but frankly, they are scenarios that we would rather throw across the room and never have to look at again, right? It is in these scenarios that we find it harder to give thanks because we focus on that one thing and say, why why should I be thankful for that? And the, the ability to give, the inability to give thanks in those times, rather, is okay, and it's normal because it's okay to not be okay in life. I am comforted by the fact that our God is a loving God who sees us and hears us and knows us, and he knows exactly what we're going through in any given moment. He calls us by name and says, Ruthann, I love you, even though what you're going through is really hard. He tells us that it is okay to not be okay after all, he is a God who rejoices with us when we, rejoice, when we rejoice, and he mourns with us when we mourn. Our God also knows, or our God also wants us to know that we can trust him with anything. As 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us, we belong to Jesus Christ, who loves us for who we are and has given us new life. And if we, as believers, believe in that eternal promise that we have been given new life and we can make it through anything with Jesus, so too can we trust that God will be with us in all of our earthly struggles and challenges, right? Even Jesus himself had to put his trust in God when he was here on earth. Jesus, being both fully divine and fully human, had one of the most unique experiences here on earth while he lived. He had the privilege of knowing exactly what was going to happen, when what was going to when it was going to happen, and why it was going to happen. Yet he still experienced the same emotions that we experience uh, throughout our lifetimes. Jesus experienced tremendous joys, and he also experienced tremendous sadness. To give a few examples, he befriended many people throughout his life, and he ate, and he laughed with them, and he uh, shared stories with them, and just was there with them. He wept when his friend Lazarus died, even though just moments later, Jesus would resurrect him. He still wept for his friend Lazarus. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness alone, afraid, and all by himself in the wilderness. 40 days by himself before beginning his earthly ministry. Where at any point he could have given into the into the temptation to just 
run away from all of this, to run away from what was going to happen and what was to come. But he didn't. The greatest example in which I think Jesus puts his trust in God is towards the end of his life, when Jesus goes to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus had just shared his final meal with his disciples in the upper room, and he knew exactly what was going to happen. In just a few short hours, Judas Iscariot would betray him, and Jesus would be arrested, which would then begin, as we know, one of the greatest trials that any person could ever face. We're told in scripture that in this moment, as he is in the garden, that he is sorrowful and troubled about this impending arrest and everything else that was going to come. Yet what does Jesus do? He prays. He knew what the outcome was going to be, yet he still felt fearful, and he felt the need to put his worries and his concerns in the hands of God. He trusted that God would carry him through to the end. And he knew that in the end, there would be good news still. Unlike Jesus, our lives are a series of great unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen in the next day or the next week, the next month or the next year. We don't even know what might happen in the next minute. Hopefully I'll still be preaching, but uh, we don't know what's going to happen during the course of our lives. But like Jesus, we also have the same power to put our trust in God. God has carried us to get us to where we are today, and he will continue to see us through to the end, no matter what. He loves us, and he cares for us, and he sees us, and he says, I know this is hard, but we're going to get through this together. And isn't that something to be thankful for. So if this Thanksgiving, or if this holiday season, or the season after, is more difficult for you than other years, I hope that you too can carry this hope that comes from trusting in a loving God who walks alongside us every step of the way. I want to close with a prayer that comes from Julian of Norwich. Julian of Norwich was a Christian female mystic that lived during the Middle Ages, and she is someone that I have come to uh, respect and to really adore some of her works, and so have many other scholars who have uh, looked into what she has provided us uh, here in the modern day. The prayer that I'm about to read for you may sound overly optimistic at first, but when you really let it dwell in your soul, you'll discover that the meaning comes from this truth, that we can trust God with whatever may come. So hear the prayer by Julian of Norwich. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. May it be so. Will you pray with me? Loving and trustworthy God, we gather here on this cold, snowy, blustery morning, and we're reminded of your faithfulness in all seasons. The seasons come and go in rhythms that are predictable. And although we acknowledge that the seasons in our life are not as predictable, we know that we can rely on your steadfast faithfulness. Because even as our lives uh, get crazy and then become calm once again, we know that one thing never changes, and that is you. As we enter into this holiday season, may we all be reminded of the things that you have given us and that you have blessed us with. And even if this holiday season is difficult for us, or uh, what we're going through seems 
completely overwhelming at the time, we ask that you would remind us of your presence in all times and in these times. We pray for those in our community who may be facing such life's challenges, those who are struggling to stay warm in the midst of this cold. We pray for those who are experiencing hunger like they never have before. We pray for families across the United States who for the first time this year will be celebrating the holidays without a loved one. We pray especially for the families of uh, the three football players from the University of Virginia who were killed last Sunday in, a, in an act of violence. We pray for comforts, for healing, for those families, and for many more who have lost their beloveds to violence. We also pray for those outside of the United States, even though they may not be celebrating Thanksgiving this week. We also know that <clears throat> challenges and uh, Life struggles happen outside of this community. We pray for those in Ukraine who are still uh, be feeling overwhelmed by what is seeming to be a relentless uh, struggle of war. We pray for uh, the families that have lost their loved ones as well. This morning, we have the special opportunity to bless prayer shawls that will become reminders to people that God is with them in their challenges. As each prayer shawl goes out into the community and into the world, and as the recipients wrap them around their shoulders, may they feel your love and your warm embrace in every stitch that has been knitted, in every color that has been specially chosen for them. <clears throat> and may they wear this prayer shawl with newfound courage and hope that whatever it is that they are dealing with at this moment, that all shall be well, because you are with them. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the things you have blessed us with. And we give you thanks for this church, for this faith community, and for your people. In your name we pray. Amen. black folders in the pews. Thank you, Don. Simply fill out a card and drop it in the donation station on your way out of the service. For those watching online, simply leave a comment on Facebook or visit our website and use the connection card found there. Now, will you please join me in prayer? Dear God, for creation and go. And for growth, we are thankful, O oh Lord, for breath and for life, for each beat of our heart, for the wonder of sight, for sleep through the night, for love and for mercy, we are thankful, O oh Lord. For Jesus, our Savior, we praise you, for each gift you have given, for each promise you've made, for the blessings we live in, for the life that you gave, we are for forever thankful, O oh Lord. Amen.
It is now time for our morning offering, your opportunity to partner in ministry with MUMC. We are making a difference in changing the world together. Thank you so much for partnering with us. You can place your offering in the donation station, or you can use the drive-up offering box located under the overhang by the north doors. You can also text your offering to the number on the screen. You can scan the QR code inside the black folders, or you can give by visiting our webpage, umcmarshall.org. Thank you. Father, out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today and give our whole selves to you. Please take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join in our closing hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
It's my turn again. Guess what we're going to do? <laughs> Ooh, so, I have some times, or some days and some times, that we would love to invite you to come help if you're available. Um, it's time to decorate the church for Advent. If you would like to volunteer with this, please contact Carol Gardner or leave a message with Shannon in the church office, and she will pass it along. This is when we're going to start, tomorrow. 1 p.m. We could use a few fellas, if you're available, to help set up some trees. We're going to start at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Then we're going to decorate on Wednesday, November 23rd at 1 p.m., and then we're going to do it on Friday at 10 a.m. If you're available, please join us. Also wanted to remind you that we have Advent schedules right here. They're at the back of the church if you would like to grab yours today to look over and see what we have planned. In two weeks, on Sunday, December 4th, we will be having a family way event from 12.30 to 2, right after the 11 o'clock service called Reindeer Games. This is... <laughs> There's a reindeer right there. This is open to families and parents of infants, toddlers, and children, pre-K through fifth grade. Come and enjoy some holiday games, activities, crafts, and treats to kick off the Christmas season. Lunch will be provided as well. So if possible, please contact Maddie Mertensen or Pastor Aaron ahead of time and let them know if you plan on joining us. Then, Wednesday, December 7th, from 6.30 to 8.30, MUMC will be hosting a Sorry about the fly. They're sticking around and we're blessing them. Host, we will be hosting a Visio Divinia, Divinia paint night. Reverend Cora Glass, owner of Recreate Art and Retreats, will help us in a playful spiritual exercise as we paint the nativity scene. Participants will enjoy a gourmet hot chocolate bar and take home their own unique artwork. Refreshments and supplies are included. Pre-registration is required. Please check the midweek email for a link to register. Now, receive this blessing. May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings which surround you. May thankfulness rise up within you, and may the grace, peace, and love of God protect, defend, and empower you wherever your path may take you. Have a great week. Thank you. <laughs>